Hey everyone, this is Connor Mead with the Calculation Center with another video on our linear algebra series. Um, in this video, we'll be talking about checking vectors for linear independence. This is a topic that a lot of students have trouble with the first time they go around. So let's see if we can uh, at least get down the algebra here and how we can actually literally check this, even if we can't develop some of the geometric intuition. Um, so remember that we say a bunch of vectors v1 to vn, if we have n total vectors, we say they're linearly independent if and only if um, for any ai in R, a1 times v1 plus a2 times v2 plus a dot 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 up to an vn is equal to zero. This can only be true if a1, a2, dot dot, dot equal to an are all zero. So what this essentially says is we've got a bunch of vectors and we can freely choose these scale parameters a1, a2, dot dot, dot up to an, and then we can add all the vectors up together. And the claim is these vectors are only linearly independent when we ch um, if the only way to get the zero vector out when we add them all up, these scale copies, is by choosing all our scales to be uh, zero simultaneously. Okay? Now, let's take, for example, these vectors below. In this case, n is going to be three because we have a total of three vectors. n refers to the total amount of vectors we have. So v1 is 1 to 1, v2 is 2 minus 1, 2, and v3 is 3, 0, 1. And we want to check for linear independence. And how we do about this, how we go about this is we set up this equation here and we're going to solve for all possible values of the a1, a2, and a3 and see if the only solution is the all being zero. Okay, so we lay out the equation a1, v1 plus a2, v2 plus a3, v3 is equal to zero, which in this case is zero, zero, zero. Uh, to be clear, this zero here is the vector zero, which is just the vector which has zeros in every one of its components. Um, so then we, what we do here is we take this equation, we substitute in v1, v2, and v3, and from our knowledge of how to multiply and add vectors together, or scale vectors, I should say, uh, this is equal to a1 plus 2a2 plus 3a3 uh, 2a1 minus a2 plus uh, 0a3 and a1 plus 2a2 plus a3. And that has to be equal to 0, 0, 0. And notice that this is a system of linear equations because we're looking for all values of a1, a2, and a3, which simultaneously make this first equation be equal to zero, the second equation be equal to zero, and this third component be equal to zero. Okay? Now from here, we're going to just quickly convert into an augmented matrix equation and solve it. We're going to have one, two, three. Well, actually, let's uh, just make this clearer for a second. This is two minus one, zero. Um, one, two, one. Apply to a1, a2, a3 is equal to zero. This is the matrix form of our equation. I just wanted to do it to make clear that this is indeed a matrix equation. Um, but if we want to solve it, we really should turn it into an augmented matrix equation, which is 1, 2, 3, 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 1, and then 0, 0, and 0. Okay? So from here, we're going to send row 2. Well, let's put in our pivot. Uh, we're going to send row 2 to row 2 minus 2 row 1, and row 3 to row 3 minus row 1. And let's see what that gets us. Let's see if we can keep everything in sight. 1, 2, 3. That won't change. These zeros won't change because when you do row operations on a column of zeros, it will stay as a column of zeros. You can think about why that's true a little bit. Um, excuse me. Um, here we're turning these things into zeros. We know these are zeros. And what do we get left over? So minus 2 times 2 is minus 4. And minus 1 minus 4 is, of course, minus 5. Um, minus 2 times 3 is minus 6. And we're just subtracting off one copy of these. So this will be 0, and this will be minus 2. OK? And now if you're, if you're comfortable with equations, you can, might always already be able to see why this implies that a1, a2, and a3 have to be 0. But let's just be a little more careful and go through it diligently. Um, also, just notice that we automatically got our third pivot. Normally, you'd get your second pivot here, and you'd have to use the second pivot to turn everything below it into zero. But since this automatically happened in the process because we were lucky, um, we can just put in our third pivot here. And now we're going forward to back substitution. So row two is now sent to row two uh, minus three row three. And row one is going to get sent to row one um, plus three over two row three. Okay. 
Um, notice that this will turn the 3 here, because we're going to divide by 2, then multiply by 3, so we'll get minus 3 here. And that will turn this into 0. And notice that I, in other videos, I'm going to try to avoid working with um, fractions. But in this particular case, it doesn't cause us any troubles, because basically no more fractions will propagate through the equation. So this becomes 1, 2, 0, 0, minus 5, 0, 0, 0, minus 2, 0, 0. And by the exact same reasons, um, we can send row 1 to, uh, let's say, uh, what would be 2 fifths? Oh, what I, well, I need to say uh, row 1 plus 2 fifths row 3. Uh, this would be row 2 as well. Okay, so we're adding on 2 fifths of this row. That will give us a minus 2. When we add on, we'll get 0. So this equation becomes, and obviously the right-hand side isn't changing because they're all zeros. And this is what we're left with. Sorry, I'm clear this is a zero, not a six. And we can divide row two by minus five to get this entry equal to one, and row three by minus two. And what we get is one, 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 across the board being equal to 0, 0, 0, and this means that a1 is equal to 8. Well, let's just read it off a little more carefully, I guess. Uh, this is a1 is equal to 0, a2 is equal to 0, and a3 is equal to 0, which implies that our original set of vectors, I'll just go grab them again for a second, these three vectors are linearly independent, because the only solution to the equation was a1, a2, and a3 all being 0. So these three vectors here are therefore linearly independent, or LR for short. Okay? Now let's just take a moment to observe something, because this is going to be important uh, to generalize this problem so you don't have to go through this process every time. If we look at this bit here, we'll notice that, well, let's see if I still have this copy, yeah, I do. So here are the three vectors we're working with. And notice that in this matrix equation, the columns of the matrix are actually equal to our linear, are the vectors we're checking for linear independence. And this will always be true. Okay? So you can actually skip this argument here, where we talked about the definition and stuff like that. And we can actually just jump straight to setting up this matrix equation. So if you want to check if a bunch of uh, vectors are linearly independent, uh, smoosh them together into a matrix where each of them are a column of that matrix, apply it to the vector a1, a2, up to an, and set it equal to zero, and solve that equation and see what you get out. Now, over here, I've set up another system of equations that we can go through quickly, and we want to check if these three vectors are linearly independent. So I did what I just said there, and instead of setting up the argument from the equation and stuff like that, I just jumped immediately to these three vectors are linearly independent if this equation here has only zeros for solutions. So therefore, if we want to check if they are linearly independent, we have to check if it has any non-zero solutions. If this equation has some non-zero solutions, the vectors, vectors are not linearly independent. They are linearly dependent. Okay? So notice this is where, so we set up this equation by taking this as the first column, corresponding to our first vector. This is our second column, corresponding to our second vector. And this is our third column, corresponding to this vector. Okay? And let's quickly solve this equation. So we get a 1, 3, 4, minus 1, oh, minus 1, minus 1, 2, 1, equal to 0, 0, 0. Now, let's just do it quickly. This gets sent to 1, 3, 4, 0, 3, 3, and 0, 5, 5. And that's just from us doing the transformation row 2, getting sent to row 2 plus row 1, and row 3, getting sent to row 3 plus row 1. Okay? And then it's pretty easy to see as well that if we send uh, row 3, to row 3 minus 3f. Three, uh, actually, that should be probably a 5 over 3, I imagine. A minus a 5 over 3, row 2. This will become a 1, 3, 4, 0, 3, 3, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And now look at this. This is looking a little suspicious because we remember that rows of zeros with zeros on the other side often, not always, but often correspond to infinite, infinitely many solutions. So let's see what this means. We've only got two pivots. We don't have enough pivots. 
Um, so let's see. But since we can't put in any more pivots, we are indeed done. Um, so we just have to proceed with back substitution. So let's send um, row 1 to row 1 minus row 2 to turn the, everything above our pivot into 0. And we'll get uh, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And sorry, I'm also throwing in the transformation here. Row 2 is being sent to row 2 over 3. Okay, this row operation, maybe I should call it. Okay, now remember that each of these columns, this is the A1 column, this is the A2 column, this is the A3 column. So our equation now looks a little like, if we turn this back into equation, which is usually what we do in this kind of scenario, we get A1 plus A3 is equal to 0, um, and A2 plus A3 is equal to 0. Or equivalently, A1 is equal to minus A3, and A2 is equal to minus A3. Now notice that this means that some solutions will be non-zero, right? All our solutions are of the form um, minus A3, minus A3, A3. So e.g. Um, A1 equals to, uh, let's say, well, let's fix A3 first, I guess. So e.g. Uh, A3 equals to 1 implies, if A3 is 1, this means A3. 2 equals minus 1, a1 equals minus 1, and this is a solution that is non-zero, so therefore our vectors are not linearly independent, and they are in fact linearly dependent, okay? And that's for these ve three vectors up here. And notice as well that if we in fact do as we say, so e.g., um, we said uh, a1, what was it, a1 is equal to 1, a2 was e oh, no, a1 is equal to minus 1, a2 is equal to minus 1, a3 is equal to minus, wait, no, a3 is equal to 1. This is meant to, from the work we did down here, this should be a solution, so let's just check it out. Or rather, we should be able to add up these numbers, if we scale by these factors, we should add them up and get 0. And that should be, that's a contradiction to the definition of linear independence. Okay, so the claim is minus 1 times 1 minus 1 minus 1 plus minus 1 times 302 plus 4 minus 1, 1 equals 0. And notice that our scaling factors, oh, I guess we can put a 1 out here. Notice that our scaling factors are non-zero. So if this comes out to be 0, that's very bad for linear independence. So indeed, we get minus 1, minus 3, plus 4, uh, 1 plus 0, minus 1, and 1 minus 2 plus 1. Those are, that's what we get if we combine all these vectors, and this is indeed equal to uh, 0, 0, 0. So our vectors are indeed not linearly independent. Okay, so this is Connor Mead with the Calculation Center, and hoping that helped you guys out a little bit. I'll see you guys next time.